they're going to bet it. That's exactly what an inefficient line is. That's what sharp bet. Hey guys, welcome back to this channel, William Lease. Some people call it sports betting truth, but this is the number one stop for data storytelling, data journalism, and everything related to telling stories with data. Now, today we are going to talk about wager talk. They are the next target of the reaction series on this channel. They are a group of sports betting touts that spun off from pregame after the Deadspin article came out about pregame, exposing them as a fraudulent touting operation they were. And so a lot of these former pregame touts whose reputations were being destroyed by still being affiliated with RJ Bell and the pregame.com scam decided to jump ship like rats and create their own touting service, hoping that Starting a new service would kind of like help them rebuild their reputation. Nope, you can run, but you can't hide. I'm still here to call you guys out as the fraudulent touts that you are. I mean, you got a lot of who's who's and just the worst of the worst when it comes to scamming, lying, fraudulent touts. I mean, you have Marco D'Angelo, you have Teddy Covers, you have Ralph Michaels. You have a lot of fraudulent touts over at Wager Talk that do what they do best, scam and lie people out of their money, embellish their long-term record, act like they're experts when they're really not, and just lose people a lot of money by selling their fraudulent picks. So there's this uh, wager talk video that comes out. It's uh, about 48 minutes long. I'll analyze a, a little bit of it. I don't want to do the whole thing, but just to show you guys how these guys have no idea what they're talking about. And if you buy picks from these people, you are throwing your money away and giving money to scam artists. So without any further ado, let's do this. Hmm. I think it's that three and a half that always makes me question why isn't this at three and uh i think it's because i give a little nod here to tennessee but i know you're on the other side yeah i am kelly and this is going to be uh my best bet so i'll just you know say a couple words here and save everything for the end i think part of that three and a half i'll address to you is the return of derrick henry and the market's gonna overreact to that but remember you know, these backs, yeah, he is going to have fresh legs, but is he going to have his timing? You can't, you know, simulate game speed in practice. This will be a guy, and especially Derrick Henry, how many times have you heard the saying about a running back? Oh, he gets better as the game progresses. Well, that's Derrick Henry, and that's going to be even more so in this first game because he's not going to have his timing hitting the holes in the blocking schemes and everything else but it is definitely something to help Tennessee. And even if it's just from the mental standpoint, they got their stud back. So I think that's why you're seeing that hook there. That would make a lot. So what does this guy think practice is? Like, does he think Derrick Henry hasn't practiced at all, so he's not going to be able to hit the holes and practice timing and everything in practice? Like, what does he think practice is? Yeah, he might not have played the last six weeks, but what does he think practice is? So Marco D'Angelo, one of the former pregame touts who was exposed as a fraud uh, over at pregame by the Deadspin article and one is one of the touts who jumped ship uh, like rats jumping off a sinking ship to uh, wager talk, you know, as a rebranding effort. Um, as you can see in front of me, Kelly Stewart, also known as Kelly in Vegas. I'm sure she's a very nice lady. I actually felt bad for her for what happened at ESPN, but let's face it, she's a tout. No better than the rest of them. And um, she's kind of like Steve Fezzik. You know, for, for those of you who don't know, Steve Fezzik is a tout who uh, is affiliated with pregame. And he's pretty much made his living off of winning the LVH Super Contest twice in 2008 and 2009. I mean, yeah, very impressive to win that back-to-back. -back, but what has he done since? And yet he's still... Uh, 14 years later, uh, uses that as why people should buy picks from him. Uh, just like Steve Fezzik, she m hit a long shot parlay, Moneyline College football parlay, like 10 years ago, and has been, been living off that ever since to justify why you should buy picks from her. So just another run the mill tout who scams and lies to people. A lot of sense. VR, your thoughts on the very first game on Saturday afternoon. Well, I, I, here's what I'll let you guys know. I, I'm going to share best bet at the end. Um, everything else, I'm going to give you my strongest opinion when I have one so that you're able to manage risk or tell you pass. 
So if this touting operation was truly worth a damn, you think this guy, whoever this clown is, would afford a camera? Uh, would it be able to sync up his audio, first of all? His lips are not matching the audio. And second of all, afford a better camera. I mean, it looks like he's using a webcam from his computer. You think someone who is really uh, successful at this would be able to afford a better camera, better audio and video quality than this clown? Um, if you think they put this much effort in their production values, how much effort do you think they're going to put into their picks, right? Um, because I don't want to give a lean and have something change between now and kickoff. I expect to fire away uh, come this weekend. Uh, here's one of those games where I could share some information. I saw sharp money come in on the Tennessee side on the money line, though. And here's where I... Sharp money according to who? Sharp money according to who? If you're going to say sharp money, come in, explain it. This is just another gimmick that touts use. They claim to know who all the sharps are and where all the sharp monies are going. 99% of the time when touts are talking about sharps or sports betting expert or odds makers, they're just talking about other fellow touts. That's what, they're, that's what they're referring to when they're referring to the sharps or the smart money or the wise guys or people within a network or a syndicate odds maker. They're just referring to other fellow touts. I guarantee you when he's talking about sharp money, that's what he's referring to. Made sense. They hit those books that underpriced the money line. We know that three and a half point home favorites win the game around 64% of the time. And if the money line is lower based on the conversion from point spread to money line than what the implied win probability should be, they're gonna bet it. That's exactly what an inefficient line is that's what sharp bettors are looking for that's when you find a mistake with absolute certainty and regardless of outcome you made a good bet kind of like those progressive chasers that are playing those slots they know they're getting you know spreads and money lines are calculated on two completely separate algorithms i can tell you that right now the models that formulate a money line bet are different than models that formulate a point spread. I do this in my own models. If you ever saw my own models, uh, what, regardless of sport, I had different algorithms, different input variables, different things going into a point spread and a money line because one is measuring a percentage, a binary variable, yes or no, will this team win or not? And the other one is measuring a continuous variable continuous variable, meaning it occurs in a linear trend. They use two completely different classification and regression algorithms. That is what this clown is missing. That's why I was face palming because so, you think a tout who's selling picks and claims to be a sports betting expert would know that, but he doesn't because he's a tout fraud who doesn't know anything about stats. He doesn't know anything about math. He doesn't know anything about statistics or anything like that. He's just a scammer who bilks people out of their money, uh, lies to people, swindles to people like typical touts do like the typical trash fraud scamming touts you find at wager talk every time they spin even if they're putting money and they're losing they know long term that they're placing plus cv bets and that's all these guys were doing um and it made sense because tennessee in this spot a progressive slot jackpot has to get very, very, very high for it to be plus ev to the point where it's usually not going to happen same with the lottery not, not only historically is in the much better position obviously they had the week off but you couple that with uh inexperienced quarterback on the other side where we saw he's the only one still standing um i went against one of my uh historical trends that i like to follow and that's not backing quarterbacks without playoff experience in the playoffs um but nothing is absolute or certain. And I, I expressed last week, that's the key with sports betting. You have to understand we're talking about probabilities, not certainty. Okay, if we're going to talk about probability and not certainty, then why don't you give us more information on this trend about not backing inexperienced quarterbacks in the playoffs? Because just off the top of my head, I can name inexperienced quarterbacks who have made playoff runs. Joe Flacco, Colin Kaepernick. I mean, that was just off the top of my head. Tom Brady back in his first Super Bowl run in 2002. Uh, I don't like to back inexperienced quarterbacks in the playoffs. What if I told you that football is a team sport and 11 guys are on each side of the ball? Yes, quarterbacks are very important, 
important, but there's a lot more that goes into it. How about giving some more information, statistics about inexperienced quarterbacks? But anyway, stuff like that isn't really going to influence a line. And I agree with that move. I think anyone that was able to get that Tennessee money line at below that, call it 175 or better, did damage. Um, that's why now you're looking at a much higher money line. I'm hoping tennis Cincinnati betters come in and take Cincy on the money line so I could follow those sharps that took Tennessee on the money line. Because again, I'm looking to do the same thing, find inefficiencies. Now we said in the playoffs, pick the winner, you're going to cash the ticket greater than eight out of 10 times, even higher than in the regular season. The highest is the wild card round in the conference championships. We know that. So this is that middle round where um, point spreads do matter a little bit more. And that even gives me a little more comfort in looking at taking the money line instead of laying the three and a half in this spot. Because again, bottom line, that's just talking market efficiencies. Uh, I don't want to go along and take up more time. But even as far as X and O's, I think without the Derrick Henry situation, Tennessee has the advantage. And I think anyone that digs into the Derrick Henry addition isn't going to pay it any mind um, because of the fact, I think even without him, they only lost uh, like 11 yards per game or so. It was like so minimal, over almost random occurrence. So it's not like he could only help. He can't hurt. And I think that's where... Uh, the injured player theory may not come into play. All right, before I look at the stat graph, I just want to say that, that guy went a good minute or two. I don't know how long he went just rambling about total nonsense. It made absolutely no sense. And then he starts to redeem himself, saying how the Titans didn't really drop off that much without Derrick Henry. But um, total nonsense. A rambling tout. This is, that is the ramblings of someone who has no idea what the hell they're talking about, and all they care about is is marketing themselves to get you to buy their picks. They don't care about actually knowing what they're talking about. They don't care about these things. Touts have one mission, to get you to buy their picks, so they just care about marketing themselves and the hype. Anyway, this is all trash. All these stats right here are absolute trash, by the way. Points per game, yards per game, passing yards per game, rushing yards per game, total trash. These are elementary level statistics statistics that are going to get you nowhere when it comes to betting on football. Uh, and the statistics that are going to help you are a lot more complex and advanced than that. Like Q1 scoring per game, Q2 scoring per game, like total trash. None of these stats are going to help you at all. But this is the type of thing that touts do. They put these stats up here because the average people doesn't know that these stats right here are trash and aren't going to help you at all because they have no context, first of all. And second of all, they're just too basic. But touts will put stats like this up to make it look like they know what they're talking about, to give them credibility so you buy their picks like lambs to the slaughter. Hey, in this spot, because he's one of those big name players that should add to the betting line. Um, but I think anyone that takes two seconds is going to realize he shouldn't is in the running back position for Tennessee based on their metrics this year. So, again, I, I like the Tennessee side, Kelly. Uh, I know there's disagreements. With Marco, and real quickly, uh, there will be sharp betters on both sides. Last week, we saw that with the wild card round. So, on a lot of these games, you will see betting syndicates on opposite sides. No crap! No way! Are you telling me that people bet both sides and it's not unanimous? No way. And I'm going to repeat this self. What he's talking about here, these sharps, these betting syndicates, I guarantee he's talking about other touts. It's Nine times, eight times out of 10 on different numbers, but two times out of 10, they will actually uh, disagree at the same number, which is a rarity. Uh, so again, with uh, once we get into the playoffs, weigh that into your handicap. And so I like Tennessee, but I don't want to disagree. We'll see what happens as we go on. Tennessee open minus 140. There is one minus 170 on the way to talk on screen. So if you're going to take VR's advice and bet that money line. Make sure you That's get the best one. price. Looks like three and a halves across the board if you agree with Marco. On to Sunday evening. This is going to be an interesting one. You've got the Niners coming off that nice win at Dallas. And yes, I... I'm going to skip ahead in the video. Nerd charts. I couldn't even say it without making it a tongue twister. Somehow, 
Oh man, it's Ralph. Some way. Uh, Ralph and I. Not Ralph Michaels, total fraudulent, awful tout. Like one of the worst touts of all time. Scam artist, long-term loser, has no idea what he's talking about. You think a guy as successful as Ralph Michaels supposedly claim he is would be able to afford better audio equipment instead of having to use his freaking headphones, right? Would be able to afford better audio equipment. But anyway, total fraudulent tout. Ignore everything, this guy's. Oh, man, I can't wait. Um, I didn't know he's on this. I haven't watched this video yet. Oh, man, I can't wait to roast this fraudulent tout. I just got finished doing a video with John Ryan, extended version of TNA for the divisional round. So make sure you guys check that out. Ralph, let's bring up your nerd chart and see what you've dug up for us this week. Well, number one is just quarterbacks. Now, there's nothing wow that pops out of this. All right, let's look at this. How many of these sample sizes are large enough to matter? Only Tom Brady's, and honestly, a lot of these numbers in Tom Brady's sample sizes like go back, what, almost 15, 20 years? All of these sample size, like a sample size of seven. So this clown, this fraudulent talent is wanting you to bet on a sample size of seven, ten. Outdated, like versus playoff teams, like Jimmy Garoppolo, three, like not, uh, none of this, none of this is, is relevant. None of this is statistically relevant, but that's what touts do. They put stuff like this up to make them look like they know what they're talking about, even though they really don't. These guys are a bunch of idiots. You better not buy picks from them. You know, if you're a playoff quarterback, you're likely to be good. But take a look at the straight up records of all the quarterbacks in the playoffs this year. All except Matt Stafford are at least 500 or better. And Matt Stafford now 1 0 with his new team. I guess we can't count those Detroit Lions games. So, um, and to the right, you'll see the chart that we did last week the team's straight up records against the spread records and net yards against playoff teams. Something that stands out again, the Green Bay Packers were off last week. They're 6-0. and And for those that say you can't play against Tom Brady in the playoffs, yes, he is 35-11 and straight up. But note, as a favorite, Tom Brady is 17-17-1. So certainly, uh, play on him or play against him, that's not one factor in your decision. I love it. I, I One of my favorite things, Ralph, is playing against certain narratives. And uh, I did not bet against Tom Brady last week, but I might be this week. We're gonna see if I end up getting to the window with the Rams. What else have you dug up for us? Well, the obvious question week one is, I mean, week division week of the playoffs is, are do the rest of the teams have an edge? And let's- I can barely hear this guy. Like I said, do you think a successful tout who's so successful would be able to afford a better microphone or something like that? But I can barely understand what he's saying. Remember, we used to have the top two seeds get buys. Now with the expanded playoffs, there's only one buy in each. So when I went back and looked at the last 10 years and just said, do the rested teams have an edge versus the non-rested teams? Not really. They've gone 27 and 7 straight up. They've gone 17, 16 and 1 against the spread. And there is a light lean to the over with 20 overs and 14 unders. So 17, 16. Still, the sample sizes are too small. And one ATS the last 10 years. <coughs> Excuse me. Breaking down the last three years, though, we have seen a mini trend where there has been an edge. Those teams that are arrested the last three years have gone nine and one straight up, seven and three against the spread and five and five over under a sample size of 10 man this guy is a total wizard now one game i want to talk about where both teams don't have rest but they combine to score 89 points is there any edge in that well this is the first time in 20 years of the database that any playoff game has seen two teams each having scored 40 points or more the last game I will say this because they're playing each other. They obviously cross each other out. But moving forward, if a team has scored 40 or more, they have gone 8-17 and 17 against the spread. But again, with the caveat that the last four games have actually won. So that angle was 4-17, and 17, but it's now 4-0. See, you're seeing in a first-hand example of why these trends that these touts give out are so worthless. I mean, sample size of 25, but ooh, the last four have gone this way. 
these people do not understand how normal distribution works. They don't understand how standard error works. They don't understand how a bell curve works. They don't understand how statistical significance works. These guys are total idiots. And if you bet based on the uh, horrible advice this guy's giving out, then you deserve to lose your money. Yes, the last four games. We'll see if anyone scores 40 or more to put that into effect for next week. The most interesting thing I did find, though, Kelly, when I found a bigger subset and went down to teams that are off 35 points. So both playoff teams scored 35 points or more in their last game. In the last 15 times that has happened, there's been a huge overreaction for those high-scoring teams. Only two overs and 13 unders. That's 87% to the under. I don't think I have the guts to bet this KC Bills game under the total, but that data sure does stand out. Yeah, Ralph. Uh... I mean, 2-13 and 13 might sound like a, a sure thing, but it's such a selective sample, a cherry-pick sample. And there is a such thing as market overreactions. I mean, you do see it, but it's not going to overreact that much because market mistakes are punished. They are. Um, but they're not going to be punished by a clown, by these two clowns. I can tell you that. Uh, that one's nauseating. I, if I do, I might just not watch. And that's not going to happen because I love the Bills this week. And uh, we'll get to that one later on in the show. You know, I just want to finish it off with two more things. And again, uh, this final one's from me. And then I have one to share that was from John Ryan. Tennessee comes in to this bye week having won their last three regular season games. And we often hear, what do you prefer, rest or rust? What's better, rest your players late in the regular season or win those games out, play them, and see what happens? Well, when we look at teams that have had a bye, like Tennessee, and won their last three regular season games, they are only 17-8 and eight straight up and only 11-12-2 against the spread. That is so. That, that's too cherry picked. There is a such thing as getting too uh, granular, and that's a great example. Uh, teams getting buys that have won their last three games. That's just you're 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 condensing that sample size down too small. As, I, as you can see, he's going with the 25 game sample size again, which is just too small to go off of. So actually, a losing number. So that red hot team with rest has not been profitable. I went one step further and took a subset. When those teams have been a subset of an already too low sample, a double digit favorite, they've gone six and one against the spread. But when those teams like Tennessee that are a single digit favorite, they have actually only gone five, 11, and two ATS. So another negative situation for the Tennessee Titans. And finally, this is one from our friend John Ryan, and you'll hear a lot more of his great technical advice on the video. He wants to break down that playoff teams that average more rush attempts have had an edge. It doesn't matter how many yards you're averaging. It's a team that wants to confirm to the run game and has averaged more rush attempts on the season. Those teams 35 and 16 straight up, 29-21 against the spread, and a slight lean to the under. John also points out when the team that averages more rush attempts also averages fewer turnovers, the numbers go to 18 and 8 straight up and a very significant 16, 9, and 1 against the spread since 2012. I mean, the game has changed since 2012. It's a different game. So I don't think you can, like, passing is a lot more prevalent in today's game. It's just a different game than it was 10 years ago. And that's the issue I have with him needing to go all the way back 10 years to get a 25-game sample. I mean, a 50-game sample might work, the one he gave out at first, but it's still going back too far. The data is outdated. It's stale. That's the issue. It's just too granular, too cherry-picked. That's the problem with this, these trends that these touts use. Too cherry-picked, too granular, sample size is too small, the data is too outdated. I've made videos on trends and why they're useless before, but this guy, this clown, is just confirming it. You love it. Great stuff from Ralph, as always. Make sure you guys are giving Ralph a follow on Twitter, at CalSportsLV. Also, don't forget to check out that other TNA video that we did with John Ryan.
We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, me, VR, Marco, that's right. We're going to preview those Sunday games. Bets normally priced at $35. As an added bonus, any picks packages loaded early for overnight Tuesday or action during the week will also be priced at nine bucks until midnight on Monday. So make sure to take advantage of getting these $25 and $35 picks for only $9 before the clock strikes 12 and they return to regular price. So as you can see, a bunch of fraudulent scam artist touts that are trying to rebuild their reputation but are failing because I am here to tell you that these guys are all frauds. They're touts. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're not expert at sports. They care about one thing, making, th making themselves appear to be credible so you give them your money for their horrible picks that are going to lose you money long term. Like I said, I'm exposing their smoke and mirrors tactics. That is how touts operate. They try to do one thing, make themselves look like they know what they're talking about. They don't actually care if they truly know what they're talking about. They just want to give the illusion. Don't fall for it. Don't buy picks from touts, especially these scam artists at Wager Talk, many of whom were exposed in the Deadspin article about pregame uh, a while back. Don't buy money from these touts. Don't give them views. Don't give them ad revenue. They're a bunch of scam artists. Don't. Bet on sports yourself. Don't rely on these fraudulent touts. Anyway, that wraps it up for this video. Again, I'm William Lease, your number one stop for data journalism, data storytelling, and anything to do with data. Until next time, this is me signing off.